Hello, good morning, everybody. Today, I wanted to thank Ficot and Eddie to invite us here. It's a great pleasure for me to be here today. And uh, near all these great professionals, the journalism, and uh, the ones that we have today here with us. So I'm going to introduce them uh, just in case you need to know anything else about them. First of all, um, we have Borca Bergareche with us, who is a director, innovation director at Vocento. And he has a long CV. He's been working for ABC newspaper. He's been a correspondent in London and so many other things, a professor in different institutions. Also, we have with us Ismail Nafria, who is Digital Innovation Director at the Grupo Godot and La Vanguarda. Also, the editor of Van Data, which is the latest um, experience of uh, visualization of data in his newspaper. He's been also working for um, other media. Carmela Rios is also our next speaker, who is uh, working in narratives in El Mundo newspaper. He was also working as a correspondent in France, in Antena Tres and CNN. She was awarded uh, Ortega y Gasset uh, uh, Prize uh, for the coverage of the 15M dream bombings. So she's got uh, a lot to tell us. And Maria Maicas, I uh, had the pleasure to work with her in the Spanish uh, Ch television, national television channel. She works for C Zeta Digital Group. And uh, as I said, she was working for the national Spanish uh, TV channel. She was uh, uh, leading the mobile multi-platform area, the laptop, innovating in all the different formats uh, being implemented on TV. Now we'll be talking today about the digital transformation First of all, I'd like to show you a couple of slides to contextualize the subject we'll be t dealing with today. Let's see if we can actually watch this on, on the screen. OK. Right, OK. Apparently, I have to press back. It's the other way around. Anyway, uh, graphs like those, um, have actually upturned the evolution of the industry. It's not that uh, the newspaper editors have decided on their own or CEOs of the media that somehow one day decided to enter the digital area. Actually, things like this, this type of graphs have actually spawned the this uh, transformation. Uh, things like the digital income by the press uh, over a period of years. And after the happy years, happy 80s, in 2004, 2005, uh, this trend starts to decrease, and then it falls into an abyss, and uh, the income hasn't actually um, been able to recover. Um, next uh, couple of years, well, in 2014 and 2015, the trend continues uh, slowing down. Uh, the next um, slide, the one that you can see here, uh, we can see also the, the fall of the newspaper sales and uh, reading, actually. This is the latest report by uh, the Reuters Institute. Uh, attached to the Oxford uh, University. Every year, they compile this uh, report about the state of the media. They interview thousands of people in different countries, and they were asking them what was their main information source. The, um, the press is in orange. And the red line means the online media sources. It's. Uh, now uh, firming or even growing. TV is also uh, continuing to, has been established. And then the yellow um, um, line, that the social media that is going up quite, uh, it's actually going up quite quickly. With these type of graphs, the CEOs of newspapers and uh, newspaper editors basically had to start working on, uh, on, a, different, on a different path. Um, 
it was just when they saw these numbers that they had to actually change path. We've been working for a few years in the press sector in this digital transformation. Is it actually working? Um, this is something that we could ask. Uh, the result is good, but it's not really uniform. Uh, well, some um, um, apocalyptic messages uh, tell us that the, uh, the hard copy press is dead and the uh, electronic media is going to um, impose itself. But actually, that it hasn't actually happened. Uh, um, the, the media in uh, the, the online audience of uh, most uh, the main newspapers actually is um, on top of the hard copies. But in all European countries, most uh, the, the, the main positions of the online um, online reading readers are from the mainstream newspapers and specifically um, the press that we will be talking today is in the top 10. You can see here uh, the, 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 main, uh, the main media from Spain. Um, we, have, uh, we have a few, uh, uh, Confidencial.com, Huffington Post. But the first positions, um, thanks to, um, to, to um, a good way of doing things, is for the media. On the other hand, income hasn't been uh, following the same trend. We saw in the previous uh, slide a fall in uh, income for hard copy newspapers in the United States. And now here we see in blue the, um, the, the income of the digital media. In uh, 2014 and 2015, we would see that, uh, uh, that there's not really an, an offset here. So Twitter users uh, didn't know how to answer to a small survey that I was trying to carry out, uh, asking whether the digital transformation was working. Well, the, the answers were half 50-50. Some said yes, some said no. They, it, they weren't very clear whether this digital transformation is actually working in the press industry. And that's actually my first question to open the discussion. Um, if the digital transformation works, what would be the main key for this transformation? Okay, I I will start with Borja Bergareche. Uh, th morning, thank you very much, uh, Rosalia. It's a great pleasure for me to be here with uh, with all of you, with this um, expert uh, uh, group, and with all this audience. So we hope that you. Please um, have many questions to us. My answer is yes, the digital transformation is happening. We are transforming, the media is transforming, and the traditional editors with the new uh, digital actors lead the information markets all around the world. And we lead also lead conversation in uh, the different uh, supports and platforms um, in, uh, in the social arena. So the answer is yes. OK. When I go to, uh, to different conferences with the, and we talk about uh, digital transformation, it's, a bit, it's something that it's uh, repeating itself. Uh, last year, we had something, a very similar meeting. And I uh, was uh, a bit more cautious last year, but this year I'm more positive, I'm more optimistic. Uh, th there's something called Verdens Gang. Um, Verdens Gang is a, is a Norwegian media. Um, he's an uh, editor and CEO is, uh, here in Madrid presenting his case. It's like a tabloid-like newspaper created by the Norwegian resistance. And it's um, um, it, uh, it's an example of how to make the change. We have to do it. He, the editor, every day m meets with the 500 employees of the company to um, spark the, the change. We have to 
to start it, we have to do it. But at the same time, we don't have to, to lose who we are and what's our role in this, um, in this arena. So I encourage you to, to have a look at his example because uh, I'm, I'm sure you will enjoy it, uh, especially knowing that it's something coming from Norway. So you think this could be one of the keys, uh, the, um, the joint work with uh, uh, journalists and uh, the rest of actors? Well, the change we have, what we need to overcome all these uh, silos and uh, uh, bureaucracy and red tape in big organizations and big and the administrations, and we, I think we can do it. I'm happy that yesterday um, I heard by a CEO, uh, he was in the Guardian media in, in London, and he, uh, he attended this briefing meeting that was open. Uh, this guy from Norway, well, and uh, granted these Norwegians live in uh, in a so-called planet of five million people, what he mentioned said, okay, I'm just going to copy this, uh, what The Guardian is doing. I'm going to do exactly the same meeting, the same briefing meetings in the mornings, but with the whole company, without losing what is the nature of our company. What do you think? Is the transformation working? Well, I believe that um, we're working on it. Uh, I've been working for some time, and I think this is not an easy task. It will take us some time. But for me, the fundamental key of uh, the whole thing is, as a media, what is the value that we can get out of any of, the, of our users? I think once we will definitely make a, break, a breakthrough once we uh, stop talking about uh, general uh, websites and because uh, uh, unique uh, and visits and stuff we counting the same uh, we're giving the same importance um, uh, just a random uh, visitor to our website and also to a subscriptor we, uh, we we can't weigh the same uh, these two types of, uh, of visitors because at the end of the day we can't we they count the same and I think we need to know with more detail who is our audience. Maybe 3% of the audience we might be able to, um, to, to reach or to, to help us with the 700 of our, um, of our business. Um, we need to look at, into this data with more detail, I think. I think we've, we've been looking into these huge numbers and big data with um, looking for audience. Um, in, in in a way that is not very orderly, and, and I'm all for it, to be honest. But we don't, we, we can't lose sight of um, how the business works. We, we, and some of our clients read, uh, the clients read the information. Uh, some uh, people uh, also pay some money to be in the, in these platforms or in these newspapers, and, uh, and then we have to know exactly how to work with each of them. Uh, I hope that in a few years we we are using different uh, uh, different metrics like revenue per user or uh, something more personalized uh, for the information that we're using. I think that's one of the challenges that we are actually facing in the in the near future just to make sure that we are in a mature, um, first and top class uh, digital business. I completely agree. I, with uh, the comment that Borja put forward, I would say that synergies are extremely important between, uh, in newspapers. It is important, it, it is impossible to, uh, to work without uh, working with brainstorming synergies or cooperation with different uh, departments, uh, national video. Uh, and I'm thinking about uh, uh, an interview uh, that we made of a top politician. So all the different actors the, 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 that, uh, that 
the, the work and that don't take place, every need to, needs to needs to work on it. Obviously, the social networks are also a support. We need to really dedicate specific content in the social networks. But there's also a paradigm that we need to end. I have been working in the television, and I think that that's going to be particularly difficult. I think that communication has stopped being a flow of data between the two parties. Now it's a permanent dialogue between us and the users. Therefore, we need to have the capacity to listen to what users say. And what our capacity to do this is like will uh, result in our success or not. And what you have just mentioned, this rupture, do you think that this transformation is really happening? Because the truth is that journalists in the press wanted to have uh, the advertising team on the one hand so that they wouldn't damage their independence. But obviously, the internet has changed that model because now they have to work together from the management team and the uh, newsroom. Are these new relationships really building up? I've been working in the publishing group in, in, uh, world in general. And yes, I think that we have advantage in this sense. We must not forgot, forget, I think, personally, that we're dealing with journalism, also content and advertising. But we need to do journalism. We need to transfer what we did before on a hard copy onto another format. What's good about this, about working in ABC or El Mundo, is that we are working with people who know where the news is. They bring new news. They know where the heading is. And this is what really matters. We're working with really good journalists. Just by going together with them in the process of getting them out of their comfort zone, then by doing this, by bringing new ways into the way they do things, by identifying other ways in which we can tell this piece of news or thinking about who our users are or which processes to follow, how to prepare a report, or looking back on how we've done things. When we are working with journalists that are so good, it's very easy to do so. So that's what's important. And finally, what we would like to say to the means of communication is that we cannot betray ourselves as, a, as media. In the case of El Mundo, it has always been known for certain things because of the opinion articles. So the challenge that we have decided to set ourselves is to provide audiovisuals, narratives, and all of the different supports and all of the different formats. For me, what is really important is it's dialogue and coherence with what we are. We cannot just try to become something that we're not. We have to know who is our audience, and we have to offer them what we are. Maria, are you as optimistic? I don't have so much more to say. Yes, I'm optimistic. At the end of the day, as they said, we've been talking about transformation for a long time, transformation, integration, call it however you like. But we've been talking about how uh, the media needs to change. I think the key is that now the user is at the center. The user, the reader, or whoever it is that we are addressing and whoever we are telling our stories to has been transformed the way they consume their habits have is what have led us, have led the media to take this huge step forward. Obviously, there is a lack of uh, funding, but this is to do with this change of habits. So now we are really trying to find different ways. We have to obviously uh, overcome the different crises, the lack of funding, but now we are focusing on the way to approach our users, our customers, and come closer to them. We also need to remember, as we've said, what we are. We have to be faithful to our principles. 
And then we have to differentiate ourselves in this world of information consumption. It's permanent information. Supposedly, there's this impression that it doesn't matter who has given you the heading, but we need to find our place in this world. I think that the key of the digital transformation is that all of the areas in this industry the editor, the journalists, the readers, the advertisers, we all have to be need and we have to be capable of creating an only narrative. We will go back to all of this, but before Ismail mentioned something that I think is pretty important. It is to do with the race regarding certain web pages, the, 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 how many web how many views you get in your web page or the number of users you get. This usually this is the way you get income in the digital world because most users usually don't want to pay. For example, in the report in Reuters report, we saw that 60% of users say they would never pay for digital content. However, we want to we always want to think that in Spain things are worse, but the truth is that in the UK or in, in England, there's 70% who would never pay. So that's why we have to depend on advertisement. There's this race for a number of pages seen. And many uh, users use the ad block, who it gets rid of this advertising. So what are the solutions? What should we do? As a future business model, I only can see a combination of advertisement and charging for content, undoubtedly. We'll see if charging for content will represent 10, 20, 50, or 70% of total income. But a generalist means of communication in the future that wants to only live off advertising, I don't think that's a good idea. I think we need to think about how to do it. But you mentioned what the key is. The key is the content that we offer, unless it's very different if unless it's worth people's while to read it because at the end of the day the decision of each user to check a website or a certain uh, means of media is because it, they find that it's worthwhile whenever if they feel that they're wasting their time they will go and do something else without worrying about it at all they don't they're it's not about going and buying a newspaper and taking it home and touching it at home so our future really depends on being really relevant to our users. And then others will appear, but we need to focus on our users who we need to give an exceptional service. And within those users, some of them will want a class A service. They will pay us a certain amount. Others will be willing to take class B and others class C. And then we'll have, have advertising. And then other users, users will pay us with their time. So I think that it's just obvious that we need to combine all these different elements. I also think that we need to think about cell phones. Maybe we can talk about it later. It's very important. And we have to decide what we're going to do about cell phones. In this case, we can use different business combination model, different business model combinations. In some cases, they're very simple and efficient products that are very easy to use, for example, Le Monde, The Economist, which you have to pay. And you think that in these cases, there will be, there could be advertising that will not be as rejected? Uh, yes, I think that we need to have more user-friendly advertising always. And you think it's possible? For sure, undoubtedly, without a doubt, yes, it's possible. Between all of us, we just have to reach an agreement and we have to be realistic. None of us who are here today like it. If anybody likes it, then they will be different to all of us. But when you visit a website, it's not very pleasant to have to wait for everything to go back into place. I think that's terrible. That's the, different, the second uh, digital transformation that is still pending. We need to identify new formats. And I think that this is what we really need to work on. All of the media needs to work on this. For example, yeah, what is happening with native advertising, advertising that is made already taking into mind 
taking in mind the content criteria. In these cases, we mix it with the content in a better way. Yes, at present, the idea is to work together with the social networks and a platform is created where the uh, advert is created by the same platform. Yes, I think that mm, we will have to face these no, new formats. We all have more than 60% of what we do, we do it on our cell phone. So in, in 2016, the format of cell phones is going to change. The Instams and Facebook and the AMP and Google are going to really condition the way in which we are read, who reads us, and how that advertising is seen and where our income is coming from. The media agencies are going to have to change their ways, whether they want it or not, because if not, their advertising is no longer going to be seen. Since you're talking about the articles on Facebook or the Moments or Snapchat, Fleetboard, all the different big social platforms, some of, some of them aren't as social as Fleetboard, but there are all these big platforms that users use more and more and that are the <coughs> enter and access to many cell phones. These, these platforms are proposing editors like you to bring your content to their platforms. Therefore, what is the future of press? Is it Does it depend on more than one content provider and then it will go to Facebook, Google, Apple, Feedboard, Snapchat, instead of having it in its own means? Would this be a radical change in the way of thinking of, about press? This is to be seen. I will reply to your question, and then I would like to say something about the business model. I think that at present, we are observing uh, an epic fight between the technological giants. There is a fight in the advertising market. They are deciding what the relevant content is. I think we need to Look at this in the way that Google or Facebook and Apple and Facebook is competing to become a video platform uh, beating YouTube. So we need to see how Google launches instant articles. I think that in this case, you still have to be careful. I think it's a bit early. However, I think it's clear that uh, the, the key is that m we, the means of communication, 20 or 30 years ago had the capacity of imposing innovations in the ecosystem. Right now, that is no longer so. These giants, when they move, they move the basis of everything. So those of us who are in the ecosystem are moved and then all of the sardine, the instant articles erupt. And we have to see how this uh, evolves. I think that we need to see how this evolves throughout the year. Then trying to guess what the final result and what the role of publishers is going to be in this new resulting ecosystem. I think it's a bit early to be able to answer that question. But I think that the answer is in what you mentioned. I think the key is that we, the private companies, will try to be hopefully prosperous, at least profitable businesses. We will work for our audiences and we'll do so in different ways, sometimes monetizing different platforms. I think that what you mentioned at the beginning is very important. We must not forget a couple of things. In Spain, we do pay for quality content in the mobile uh, surrounding, we pay much more. We pay for Netflix, for Spotify, the commissions for Amazon. We pay for many things. All of the research that's been carried out for uh, payments regarding content uh, shows so. In September, uh, a report showed that 45% of the millennials in the States were paying for content. I don't believe it. There are reports that show a very t 
terrible situation and others that present the complete co uh, contrary. Maybe they are including in the same group uh, people who have paid a very small amount. Yes, I think that we our objective should be for people to pay for content. I think that in the advertising market, we also have to bear something in mind. The market and the brands value one thing in the media, and that is big audience. <coughs> Us in the digital ecosystem, we can provide big masses of audience. Until now, this uh, point of view has uh, been bad for the publishing experience. This, this without a doubt. I think the transformation is already happening, but we need to carry out certain transformations regard, for example, frequency among other. I think that in, uh, different things are already being funded. This is a dialogue that we all need to hold and the users, the editors, all the different actors. This will determine the quality of the editing product that we are going to produce. Having said that, once uh, people find value in the market, the key is the one that you were mentioning, which is that we're drawing a path. I think we're not, we, haven't, we haven't reached our end, but we need to be talking about um, the user uh, income um, average, because we have completely different profiles of uh, different users. The, we can, um, some have different packages, A, B, C, the, somebody who randomly gets into, enters a website and just uh, has a quick read of, uh, and if you look at the Financial Times, the way they have structured the analysis of their of their audience in different typologies, depending on their the, the, the capacity of uh, extracting value and how they structure their business and content strategy around this typology of users or citizens or readers that um, see all the value that we have. And that's all based on the uh, income that, um, that they, they actually give us. I think this is important uh, in, in this uh, mix of, of the media in this package. Uh, so this is uh, stepping back a little bit, the, 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 the big picture, so to speak. Um, where are we heading in the future? Well, we'll see. It remains to be seen. We are taking active part on these processes. Um, so when uh, when a fall when when a wall falls, then you have to raise a different one. So it, um, it's it's a continuous process. Uh, well, we need these strategies uh, for your own media, but if uh, you find that in the end the game is uh, is won by uh, what they call uh, the the eyeballs, uh, the huge uh, uh, social platforms where our uh, media are embedded, then we're losing the battle. Well, they're actually trying, to be honest, but I, it remains to be seen whether they're going to reach this, um, uh, this objective. Well, I don't think it's a question of black and white. Uh, how we reach our audiences, I believe that platforms are fundamental. We shouldn't be thinking that we are not going to use these different platforms. This is suicidal. Uh, we're already uh, using them, to be honest. Um, uh, now we've uh, transferred to the New York Times, and what we've done is um, uh, disseminated our contents uh, everywhere. Uh, I've just disseminated our content everywhere. So we've incremented uh, the potential uh, public and also uh, deciding what is the, the, the faithful uh, subscriptor or the, or, or the client that we, we are actually heading to. Um, so we should be actually um, keeping our, uh, our nature as a media and then from then on uh, look at the type of, um, of user or reader that we're actually looking for. Um, it's the same with the Spotify. I don't buy the whole uh, record, for example, um, I just uh, take 
different uh, different songs, different themes. Uh, we have to understand that our user um, wants to consume our, um, quality, and that's important. Okay, well, at the end, we are actually moving to the consumption model like Spotify, and that's completely different. That's a shift um, in comparison with the traditional model. Well, on a TV channel, for example, uh, we can actually take the different programs and taking them to a different platforms. But um, a newspaper is actually a, a, a mixture of news. Um, so it's, so to speak, it's a closed uh, product. This is what happened today, and this is actually a, a hierarchy of themes, uh, things that I uh, consider are the most important. If we actually break this down, uh, the the end product is completely different. Uh, we are, at the end of the day, just a, a, a producer of contents. We are just giving our products to different platforms, and we disappear as a newspaper. That's what I think. Well, the, the user actually um, builds up their idea, mixing up contents from different platforms. Uh, that's why there are, uh, these platforms exist, uh, telling you as a user, remember that this is, uh, in my opinion, as a, as a newspaper, or as a media, or as a platform, this is the most important event of the day. And then the uh, user actually decides um, what contents to pick up or to read. So. Um, I think that sometimes we are extremely conscious that different types of uh, users do different things with our contents. I don't think that um, there's one, uh, just one person that uh, I'm the, the big brother newspaper that I will tell you what's important. Um, Still, there are many Spaniards, thousands of them, that every morning go to a newspaper uh, um, shop and buy it on hard copy. But and we have different profiles here. But we're trying to look after um, a specific profile of um, uh, of readers. Um, but at the same time, we are devoting a lot of resources, increasingly more and more to users of uh, Facebook, for example, like in the um, Paris bombings, something that happened on a weekend with a lower uh, newspaper consumption on the internet, uh, with changes of shifts and less workers in the, in the press room. Uh, last week, um, somebody from the Vocento group told us that uh, a, a news uh, room of Gijón, a city in the north of Spain, what they did is they reinforced all the uh, digital team from two, one to two, from one, two people to, till seven, because they needed in real time uh, to uh, broadcast all the contents that were happening in a specific uh, piece of news such as the, the Paris bombing. And I think in this way we have actually evolved, uh, we are developing, and this this is an ongoing process, but we've got rid of um, some of the old habits, and that's good. We're being extremely strategic as editors, uh, targeting um, uh, contents and transferring them to platforms like Facebook uh, with um, uh, and, and we, we're facing uh, a new um, environment with monetization and paper user, etc. And, and we are actually increasing our audience uh, to levels of 60 or 70 percent. Or um, obviously, I think this uh, this development uh, has been going on for about a year. We should be now looking at uh, focusing on Facebook. What is exactly? Uh, what are you? What are your aims? Where are we going? That, and we, we should be looking at this. Um, as I as I mentioned, this newspaper in Gijón um, introduced five or six more people on a weekend. I think this is part of the transformation. This uh, needs to reach the different news uh, rooms, and uh, um, we, uh, we we're not. We need to diversify our product. We need to know 
uh, how to do everything, you know, in hard copies and um, reach digital audiences. And I think in, in Spain, we've actually d developed uh, our strategies uh, over the past uh, months. Um, I think this is one of the, uh, of the, the main themes of this strategy at, at an international and, and, and national level. In, in the case of the Paris bombs, uh, with um, when this, uh, this, the bombings happened, were produced, we actually designed the coverage in Paris, and that was uh, made with profile, uh, professional profiles and quality uh, reporters. And yes, you yourself, you you went as well. Yes, exactly. Um, what I did is uh, to work with a multi-platform and devise all the, the contents for different platforms, Twitter, and uh, also uh, doing a live streaming. I have a background on TV. And um, as I said, this is a fragmented consumption. On the other hand, we we have um, it, it benefits the the main website of the newspaper, and then we should be thinking about this uh, uh, this strategy from the news um, newsroom. On, we were also thinking about how to tell the story about the anniversary of the death of uh, of Franco. What we did is we um, started a timeline in Twitter. Um, not the 20th of November when he died, but the day before all the political, cultural, and social and musical context of the moment. And that was a perfect example of uh, fragmented consumption. Oh, for example, the headlines, the, the, the cover of ABC that day. Exactly. Um, there were premieres of films. Um, the Libro del Buen Amor, uh, just um, uh, so what we did is they take um, take scenes and, and things that were happening uh, those days uh, just before the death of Franco. And uh, now people are actually discovering the environment in that day, just the moment before uh, Franco was died. So we just build this, this, this package and uh, at the end of the day, we we built this uh, this story and we launched it in a on the newspaper. It was um, it, it was kind of a transmedia um, uh, report on a, on, a, on a different platforms. Yes, if we uh, tell the stories in this way, it reinforces your brand and the perception from the user. The user has a specific perception of a brand of a newspaper. Knows that it's in different <coughs> platforms in. Uh, and each user is going to expect different things. They might not expect anything uh, from Twitter, but other users might. If you're not uh, in Twitter, that particular user that is expecting something in Twitter is being uh, is going to be disappointed. So uh, it's a reality that uh, that the consumption and the production actually of the of the content has to be fragmented. Yes, you were saying about uh, uh, the Washington Post uh, going heads to heads to the New York Times. I think that's very interesting because now the the New York Times is monetizing. It has a different strategy, and and this is obviously it's a unique case because it, uh, it has been bought by Jeff Bezos. Um, um, who's building a future model, but it's going very slowly. They are on a, on a league, on a unique league. They're doing it very well, to be honest. But this is um, its not a paradigmatic case, to be honest. It's a difficult, a different case. Well, um, they might end up being a completely vertical platform, top-down contents. Well, they're trying to do that, um, um, telephone companies as well. I make a TV, I um, make the contents as well, and, and I've got the whole package. Yes, I uh, give you all the, basically, uh, all, the, all, the, all the contents. Um, well, that happened already in the past with uh, smartphones as well. In, in the New York Times, what they did was to um, 
well, they took some time to implement new new strategies. They were actually working only on uh, ease on mobile phones, uh, just to help them how to um, create contents um, just uh, for these type of platform. Yeah, because when when uh, every time they were in the news room. Uh, just uh, writing up um, a news piece, they would get a message telling them, you know that 60% of your audience is actually reading you on uh, a different platform, on, on, a, uh, on a tablet or on a, on a mobile phone. Are, you, are we ready, actually, for this? I think we can actually improve. More than 50% of the audience of the media is actually down through the uh, mobile media it's clearly more important than the audience on desktops yes but our the work we need to do during the following months is we need to work on cell phones we need to redefine the product the functions of the different teams we need to study and analyze what people really want what they expect from their cell phones they use it during a much shorter time or not or not very often they do it's true that um, maybe this is a myth people say people don't read for very long in a cell phone but anyway they seem to be shorter views and they are used for a different for different purposes so i think there's a lot to do in that field uh, the truth uh, is that a German weekly magazine report, uh, said that recently they could see that uh, some of their articles were read more on cell phones. They could see that uh, the time in which people, the time people spent on their cell phones reading their articles was longer than on desktops. For example, maybe when they are in the subway on their way back home or when they are sitting on their sofa peacefully at home, they use their cell phones and they can spend more time reading. Yes, it's interesting. I think that this is a great opportunity for the publishing houses, but I think that this is work that we need to do right now. This way we um, recover some privacy with our readers. A newspaper was a private action with our users and cell phones somehow bring this back. I think that desks, desktops are almost uh, a transitory stage. There are people who have directly begun to uh, consume certain types of content through their phones. Yes, and it's a very intimate uh, surrounding. So the readers that visit our media every morning uh, when they see our homepage on their computer we really like these kind of users because they visit our web page. They're, very, they're more profitable for us. And we, we, or we really like also the people who buy newspapers and the hard copy. But we also like the cell phone option because it takes us back to a private world. Once again, we really need to work on this field. The ABC newspaper recently edited a redesigning in which uh, they focused on redesigning mobile first. It was, uh, they were focusing on cell phones. They improved, th th this experience can be improved, but it was the first step. Because uh, after newspapers, web pages came, and we put the newspaper into the web page. And then when cell phones began, we put web pages into cell phones. And all of this needs to be improved. I think that things are changing. Yes, before you mentioned that advertising on cell phones is more profitable. What happens is that with your intimate devices, you mentioned it, which is usually smaller, uh, advertising is a lot more annoying. Therefore, your patience is even less than in a computer. That's why the income obtained through cell phones is even less than on a desktop. Do we have a solution to solve this? Or as we've mentioned, will we go from print dollars to data dimes? and mobile pennies. 
So what is left at the end of the day? I think that we will surely find a solution as the audience goes on to a different step. And this has always happened in the history of media. The first day, we weren't there. The second day, we were kind of present. And on the fifth day, we had re resituated ourselves, both us and the advertising. There is no other solution. We have had to do it. Mm -hmm. So we'll, we'll, we will find a solution. I think that part of our strategy involves uh, making apps, giving more importance to apps. In our case, uh, app users are a lot more loyal. They consume more. And we have different options like alerts, et cetera. So it's a much more intense relationship with users. These would be actually A users. In a desk or in a, if you're sitting at your desk, it's, it's more difficult. In the case of apps, what uh, makes a difference is the way in which you value each one of them. There are different platforms from where we can open the content directly through the navigator. Now browsers are used more. But users, when they, uh, I, I want to I be wherever the user decides to go. For example, when a user uses a news app, the average is only like 9.5%. People are not really only thinking about the news. If they want to check something, for example, in a certain newspaper or in another one, that is their own decision. Therefore, our job is to just give them the right news. They're not going to be checking seven apps afterwards. Nobody does that. Only we journalists do that. Nobody else does. I think that uh, people use a maximum of five apps repeatedly. I think that, yes, we journalists need to mm, come down to earth and realize what the reality is out there. We need to observe. And we may have our own way of consuming news, and but we also need to know what's happening outside. This really helps me. I need to ask myself, how do you get your news? What is the first thing you do in the morning? I ask my friends who aren't journalists, my parents, the young people who uh, can give you a whole master's in this field. And through all of them, I get many keys about how different people consume information. Then we go back to listening. I think that we need to be, depending on our ability to listen, we will be more or less successful. I have always considered something, and that is why are such long texts consumed on cell phones? I think that it's because of the economy. People have very limited uh, rates. Therefore, you can you want to read something that won't consume too much time or data. Data comes first. You see a text, you know that your phone will accept it without having run out of data on the 15th of each month. So that's why I think that these type of formats always uh, work really well. We haven't mentioned videos, by the way. But small video formats also work really well when we can uh, give that information without having to listen to the audio, when there's just a small banner, or when the story is presented through pictures or texts that come out gradually. I think that this capacity of listening and of replying to that need is key for us. Then the bad news is that this happens all the time. So whatever tools we use, they change every day. We go to bed and Twitter doesn't have any video, and the next morning they do have them. So for us, it's, it's all just changing really fast. Now we can use video, texts, pictures. We can all do some of everything. And tools use so quickly that we have to permanently adapt and listen to the way people are consuming. Yes, the key is listening, as we said at the beginning. I can remember 
in a forum that where we talked about the future of journalism. It was a very serious uh, forum. I'm not saying you're not serious, but it was even more serious, if possible. And we were talking about what were the three keys of the future of digital transformation. And I said, charging speed, charging speed, charging speed. And people kind of looked at me. They expected something more amazing. I think that this is crucial. If 50 or 60 percent of our audience consider that um, updating speed is crucial or data content is crucial, we need to focus on this. So we need to work on our cycles of developing products, checking our designing cycles, seeing how the different teams work together, marketing, journalists, etc. We need to see how we're going to uh, develop this new news product. And it is from here that we need to get the answer to many of the issues that we are bringing forward here. It's not something that we are used to by nature because just a few years ago, some of us were buying huge industrial plants. So this is a totally different scene. Right now we're experimenting. So this is a different type of gymnastics. I think that those of us who have the, or who are fortunate to be into it, it's really interesting. The working environment is different. And depending on how efficient our product is and how it adapts to the new needs, then it will do better or worse. I think that we have to be more agile in producing the mobile products. So uh, yes, just to add to what you mentioned, I think that there's a very specific challenge where we can all learn a lot about all of those of you who are out there doing it better than we are. So we humbly have to continue uh, fighting for talent. There are very good people out there. We have to work with them and with ourselves. And I think that it is there that we need to focus. I'm very selfish. I could continue asking questions, but I think we only have four more questions, four more minutes for questions. Yes, I can see someone raising their hand back there. I wanted, could you please explain uh, the issue regarding paying for content? I know many journalists who are unemployed at present. There's a lot of content out there, so it's difficult to think that people at present will be willing to pay. It's so easy to access information. There's so many different opinions, and many times you can uh, distance yourself from the ideology of each newspaper. So the, these contents that people would be willing to pay for, could you please define them better? Because I think that this sector is really in a deep crisis. Thank you. Yes, I would like to set a very clear example. I know that we can't be the New York Times, but uh, what do we need to do to get clients to who pay for information? New York Times got a uh, million forty thousand clients who pay to access their digital content. They're using uh, a certain method. There is a certain amount of payment that lets you pay a certain number of articles without paying. And then after that number of articles, you have to pay. Why does do all those people pay the New York Times? It is because there is a layer of users who want to consume that information. They want to do it in the New York Times because they're happy with it. And they're willing to pay $15 a month, which is the average of what they pay. So that's one payment uh, uh, model. Other people don't mind reading a piece of news in one newspaper or another. They don't mind. But some people do care. They want to read it in a specific newspaper, and this is part of the usuals. The Financial Times is another very clear case. There are different uh, access payment levels, and it's the same case. Some people want to read the information provided by the Financial Times because they think that its value is higher than that provided by other media. In the same way that certain people buy one newspaper rather than another because they think that it's better to spend a year and a bit on a certain type of hard copy newspaper. 
uh, this can be sustainable? Yes, it depends. What's not sustainable is for all of the different types of media, the native, the digital, the generalistic ones, can live off advertising. That is definitely not uh, sustainable. It's very easy to figure out the figures. If in five years' time we want to have newsrooms that can provide the quality journalism that we want, that's what we need to do. A different issue is if we want to specialize in a certain kind of topic. But if we're dealing with generalistic journalism, unless we can follow this path, that's it, we will have lost. <clears throat> and I don't want to lose this battle. We will have to reach our audience through different levels, and we'll have to make the most out of each user. There will be some users who will just spend two seconds on us, and that will be fine. And then there are others who will spend $200 a year, and I don't know how much time, and it'll be better. Well, uh, there's a question here that we can see in the screen. Um, is the United States a model to us? Well, they've um, been a model of of many things. We have a very similar consumption habits. I think the gap is actually closing. Um, now things take much less time. Phenomena is replicated in, in Europe or in Spain and the things that are coming from the, from the United States to our different uh, newsrooms as well. So the time is getting shorter. Well, obviously, at the same time, we don't have the level of penetration that you see on the United States. For example, one of the cases is Snapchat. Snapchat. Maybe the cycles of new tendencies, the arrival of these new tendencies are uh, going to be different. If you take the New York Times, and we built up um, a business uh, depending uh, uh, according to what they earn uh, with their digital subscriptors, they could uh, actually afford a newsroom of 400 uh, and so uh, journalists and not more than a thousand that is now. So uh, we don't know whether it is, is going to be sustainable. The Sun, for example, which is the the, the most um, read tabloid newspaper in the in in the, um, in the United Kingdom, uh, they closed up and they have. A, Actually, opened now because they've uh, they've taken uh, they, they've monetized um, in, in in a specific way. In Vocento, for example, um, which is a high penetration newspaper in the Basque Country, uh, we have started a new pay per content platform. This as an experiment. We believe that in the local press, like in these cases, the perception is different because sometimes many people in those regions uh, have a, a reference newspaper. And we think that that's uh, the case in, uh, in the Basque Country with the Correo Digital, which is the newspaper. Um, we have um, implemented this platform that uh, they will need to subscribe um, if they want to read more than 10 contents on the web, for example. Um, we, we're experimenting, but obviously we should actually be looking at these uh, users that um, um, uh, that would like to pay that, or that are going to pay. We don't, well, I don't think we should be looking this in terms that our content is so unique or so singular. It's more of um, um, a question of quality or, uh, or a bonding with the newspaper and, um, and adds value also. If the user is the king. They moved looking at utilities and things that add value to their experience. So they might be able to think, OK, I'll pay 5 euros a month or 10 euros a month or whatever um, because of this value that I, I think I'm going to get. And I think this is something that we'll be uh, discussing uh, next year in, the, in FICOT. I think, sadly, this is the end of, the, um, of this seminar. Thank you very much to uh, Borja, Ismael, Carmela, and Maria for being here discussing this. Thank you to all the audience and also to all the um, uh, FICOT sponsors. Uh, thank you very much.